Praise the Lord, and thank you for tuning in to another time of Kingdom Empowerment. I'm Pastor John Thomas, And I am Prophetess Tanya Thomason. And we are so honored of the Lord on today that you decided to, to tune in on today to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 We're, we are thankful unto the Lord. You know, the word declares to us to give thanks in all things. So we always take this time to just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank Amen. you for your goodness. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Yes. You know, sometimes we, 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 we forget about those things. Mm -hmm. We thank God for all the big stuff for the houses and cars and, 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 and money. But, Lord, thank you for life, health, and strength. Absolutely. On today. Absolutely. Those Amen. neglected things. For the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Amen. 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 Well, we're, we're, we get ready to get into the word, but before we get in, we'd like to open up with a word of prayer. Prophetess, can you open us up? So, Father, we lift your name on high, O oh God. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, O oh God. Yes. For this is the day that you have made, O oh God. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day, Father God. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that as you speak through us, you would speak to us, Father God. Bring illumination and revelation to your word, Lord. Let the word edify the hearer on today, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you are dwelling in our midst, Father God, that the word will go forth in power and authority. It would heal and deliver, Father God, that it would shift minds, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that the word that's being released, Father God, in this time of sharing would shift us, Father God, into our now place, Father God. Yes. We thank you, Lord yes. God, that you're throwing your weight around, Father Father God, that you're moving by your spirit, oh God, in this moment, Father yes, God. We Jesus. thank you. We declare and decree, Father God, mm, that the word, Father God, that your word declares that you seek to perform it and it will not fall to the ground. We thank you, Lord God, that you're manifesting, Father God, your word. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is even now in your presence is manifesting, Lord God, in the lives of the believer and those that are viewing this broadcast. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. And it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Open your Bibles with us to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 6. Starting at verse 1. Yes, beginning with verse 1. Mm -hmm. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, mm -hmm. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Mm -hmm. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Mm. And the posts of the door hmm, were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. Mm. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am, I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Mm. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then, then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from the tongues from the altar. Mm. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, yes. this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Mm. Then I said, Here am I. Yes. Send me. Send me. You know, when I, um, when I was thinking about, about this, this portion of Scripture about um, Isaiah, this is actually speaking about the time when God called him into the office of the prophet. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you when you do the history on on Isaiah, you know when it came to King Uzziah, he loved King Uzziah. 
a desire to do no wrong. He was like one of his most favorite kings of all. Mm -hmm. But when he died, that's when he saw the Lord. Mm. So in other words, once he, once Isaiah transitioned from this life to the next, mm -hmm. that's when Isaiah had an encounter with God mm. and he saw him. You know, sometimes the very thing that could be blocking the encounter that God wants to have with you mm -hmm. is because you may have something in the place that's blocking it. Mm. You know, and, and that's not to say that, that King Isaiah was a bad person or that he did anything wrong, but Isaiah esteemed him higher than anybody. Mm. He said, oh, he's Amen. such a great king. Oh, he's this, he's... He says that, but when he died, then he saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, mm -hmm. and the train of his robe filled the temple. Yes. Now, what that also says to me that at that moment, he had such an encounter that he experienced an open heaven where he saw the door. Mm -hmm. yes. So, so and, and, and I want you to know that in this time that we're in, God wants to give his people a fresh encounter. Mm. He wants to give his people a fresh encounter, but we've got to remove those things out of our eyesight that, that, uh, that's blocking. Mm -hmm. so, sometimes it can be our own ego. Sometimes it can be people. Sometimes it can be things. You, you've got to remove those things and put God back where he belongs. Mm. Amen. See, because subconsciously, even though we may we may say, I've never, I, I haven't replaced God, but subconsciously we have. Sometimes we can replace them with things or people or places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, can, we can replace him. And, and what I mean by replacing him, because you know, God is, he's, he's, he's all in all. Mm -hmm. What I mean by replacing him, taking him out of his position of being first. And I think in, 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 this, in this time, in this season, and even in our nation, God wants to encounter his people again. Amen. But, but King Isaiah has to die. King Isaiah has to be removed in order for them to see. Amen. 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 <laughs> that's, that's something, ain't it? Now, it is. You have to, it's, it's, you know, that we need to discover those Isaiahs. What is that Isaiah? What is that thing? Or or even sometimes that busyness that keeps God from being first in your life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, God wants to be first. He wakes us up and we go back to sleep. You know, that is your time to put God first. God always, I believe that God always gives us um, an opportunity to put him first, to put him first, that whatever it is that's blocking our vision, because that was a vision um, in the year of King Isaiah in a vision. He said, I saw the Lord standing upon a throne in, in, a, in the high place, in a high place. And so we have to put God back in that high place and remove those things that we, those altars that we've erected higher than God, that spirit mm -hmm. of idolatry. And sometimes yes. the idolatry is a good thing. You know, you can look at it as a good thing and not so much, you know, oh, I, I, you know, I'm sinning, so I'm putting that before God. But anything that you put before God, one, is sin because he, he's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't have any other gods before me. Right, so that for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Because right. those those things and that busyness and, you know, the, the things that we put before him, that keeps us even from seeing our purpose. It keeps us from yes. seeing the bigger picture of what God yes. is saying. Yes. We can't move, you know, past uh, uh, of that thing that we put first. And sometimes that thing that we put first is our daily routine. And we find ourselves cycling in life because we haven't put God first. Amen. Amen. And so when your life seems like it's been the same repetitive cycle day after day, after day, after day, somewhere along the line, mm -hmm. we have not put God 
first where he can order our steps. Come on. He said the steps of a righteous man are order, order of God. But if, right. we, if we're going to ask God to order our steps at the end of the day, come on, all that's left <laughs> is go to bed. Pray and go to bed. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we have to, you know, move those patterns, those mindsets. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's fear, um, and, and you can worship fear. You yes, can you get can. accustomed to the spirit of fear and say, look, this is who I am. This is what I do, and I'm good right here. But really, it's the spirit of fear that's got you in a place of comfortability. Amen? So mm -hmm. now he's becoming an I. He's become an idol or a thing that keeps you from seeing God high and lifted up. Amen. That the spirit of the Lord will completely fill the temple because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on. And when the spirit of the Lord fills the temple, that removes everything that we've put before the very vision that we should be seeing, which is God high and lifted up. But you know, <laughs> this is, is, it takes me back to what Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, yes. and all these things will be added unto you. But when, when we, but automatically we think of those things, we think it's just things like houses and cars, but those things are encounters. Mm -hmm. Those things are downloads from, from heaven, you mm -hmm. know, revelation, insight, mm -hmm. wisdom, uh, um, the, the, the anointing, mm -hmm. the, uh, all different aspects mm -hmm. of, of God that has to do, everything that has to do with the kingdom, the power, and the glory mm -hmm. is predicated on your ability to keep him first. Amen. To keep him first in all things, in all things. Right. See, because the, like, like we said, when Isaiah was removed, mm -hmm. then he saw him. Mm -hmm. sitting on the throne, mm -hmm. high and lifted up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Mm -hmm. So he, he so he was able to see it, it through the through the mm -hmm. doorway because it it because it, it, it speaks about it in verse four in the post of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, mm -hmm. and the house was filled with smoke. Mm. So at that moment, he had, he had such an encounter mm -hmm. with God. See, because God, God doesn't just speak to us through his word. He speaks to us through visions, mm -hmm. speaks to us through dreams, through, through nature. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any, any means God wants to speak to us, he can speak he to can. us. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he had such an encounter once King Uzziah was removed. And again, I'm not saying that Uzziah was a bad person. Right. But he was in the way mm -hmm. of, of, of Isaiah having a real encounter with God and with and within that encounter mm -hmm. and within that encounter he received his call. Amen. Right. He was able to see it. Right. <laughs> he was able to hear it. See because see but but when you read in verse 5 verse 5 says so I said woe is me for I am undone. Mm. So and because I am a man of unclean lips mm -hmm. and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips mm -hmm. for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts mm -hmm. right So all this time Isaiah thought he was good All this time Isaiah thought he had it all together mm -hmm. until he had an encounter with God and really saw Oh wretched man that I am <laughs> <laughs> I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. Yeah. Right at that moment, he 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 was he, it caused that encounter with God caused him to be so transparent where he was able not to just see see because you know he said I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips but before he even mentioned them he said because I am a man. Right. He was able to see his actual condition. Come on. His, his real condition. Where he really was. Uh-huh. This <laughs> is where I really dwell. That's why it's, it's, it's and I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in this, that it's only when you have a real 
encounter with God yes. is when you will experience true transformation. Amen. Amen. Not, not, not because you were being re religion. Being religious won't cause transformation in your life. Right. Being religious will keep you in a place where Isaiah was be before Isaiah was removed in a place of religion you don't see nothing wrong with your lifestyle you don't see nothing wrong with you know just going to church i went to church therefore i'm saved but i'm not moving in purpose i'm not sharing the kingdom right. of god i'm not releasing nothing into the atmosphere my prayer life is asleep come on somebody but when you have a real encounter with god then that encounter will show you the condition of your heart mm. yes that's right mm -hmm. that's right it will expose what what is, what is what does the word of God tell us? It says man, God knows the heart of man. Yeah, He said it is wicked. It is wicked, and who could know it? And He said it is deceitfully wicked above all <laughs> else. <laughs> and who could know it? He said your heart will deceive you because it is wicked, and no one can show you or reveal that to you but God, because He's the one that knows the heart of man. So when we get in the presence of God. He'll reveal your true nature, your heart, and everything that is on it, all the desires. Yeah, that <laughs> self-righteousness. <laughs> I mean, but, but I mean, but at, at that at that moment, <laughs> see, because you know, God God judges sin. Yes. Right. He forgives sin, but he also judges sin. Yes. Right. But but when. In verse 7, he said, and he touched my mouth with it mm -hmm. and said, well, I, I, I begin in verse 6. Mm -hmm. Then one of the <coughs> seraphims flew to me, mm. having in his hand a live coal, which mm. he had taken with the tongues from the altar. Mm -hmm. Let me stop right there. Come on. <laughs> We've got to get back to the altar. Yes. We've got to get back to the altar. But, but, okay, Listen to what happened at when he, from the altar. Listen to what he got from the altar. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to read verse 6 all over again. Then one of the seraphims flew to me, mm -hmm. having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. Mm. And he touched my mouth with it Jesus. and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, mm -hmm. your iniquity, or oh, your twistedness, because iniquity means twisted, mm -hmm. is taken away and your sin purged. Mm. So at, at that moment, once he got honest, mm -hmm. then he was open to get purged right. from the altar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was able to speak right. He was able to, to speak the word of God from a pure place. Come on, from a place where sin and iniquity had been purged from, which meant that there was idolatry on the heart of, of Isaiah, and he spoke from a place mm -hmm. of idolatry instead of from a place of holiness, love, and adoration for the king of glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, because is that, what does the Bible says? Out of the heart, the mouth. Speak speaks mm -hmm. so so his his he had to he had to get his heart together mm -hmm. so that he can speak right mm -hmm. so when he so well well where did he get his heart together when, when, when he said whoa well, i for i am undone because i am a man of unclean lips when he acknowledged his sin nature when he acknowledged sin his heart was changed right his heart was changed and he was he was ready for for he was ready for healing. He was ready for deliverance. He's ready to get that part dealt with inside of him. He was ready to live the life he was created to live. And there not the is. one he had been living. There it is. There it is. <laughs> if you want to live the life that you was created to live, you've got to get you've got to have an encounter with God. Amen. See, and, and, and that's and I'm telling you something that's that's so vitally in, in, important um, today. I mean, it's, it's vitally important every day. Amen. Yes, but it is. It's vitally important because 
unless you have an encounter with God, how can you find out what your purpose is? You can't. And you can't get, you can't move into your purpose beyond the last place that you obeyed. So the very last place that you stopped obeying God was the place where you are in your purpose. You can't move beyond mm -hmm. disobedience. When you obey in that point, at that point, when you go and you have obey at that point, then God will begin to reveal more. He will begin to open up more of who you are, who he is, and, and, and more of the facets of himself to you where you will be able to move in purpose. Come on, Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do and I speak what I hear my father speak, right. which means that the more we remove sin and iniquity by keeping ourselves in mm -hmm. a place, walking in a place of repentance, keeping ourselves in the presence of God, he will begin to expand the kingdom of God to us, we will be able to see further, wider, come on, and yes. deeper, and God will reveal different facets of who we are in him. He created man in his image, come That's on, right. and then his character yes. is developed, and then therefore, come on, we're walking after our purpose. That's right. The very reason that we were put in this earth, we're walking in the very identity of him who sent us. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And a key word on what you said, it said, and he sent us. Come on. Which is apostolic. The, the word apostle means to be sent. Mm -hmm. So if we, so in essence, earth is not our home. It's, a, it's just where we fulfill our assignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So in order to find out what your purpose is, in order to find out what, what your calling, uh, um, what, you, you know, what you're here for, you have to have an encounter with God. Well, Okay, how do I how do I have an encounter with God? Hmm. Mm. That's the question, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it's it's you have you have an encounter with God through prayer and worship. You have an yes, but in that prayer and that worship, you have an encounter with God at your very point of death. Mm -hmm. When you die to your own mindsets, when you move, remove Isaiah, sometimes you are that yeah, Isaiah. Your own Isaiah. Right, you are your right, own right. Isaiah. When you can get to a place where you can remove you mm -hmm. out of the equation, your wants, your needs, all the things that are all about you, and put God first at the very point of death, when you stretch yourself out on the altar, not bucking, not a, come on, right. not You're bucking and fighting, come on. <laughs> but when you stretch yourself out on that altar and you say, Lord God, yes, you already know what the entire situation is, but I choose to press into you. I choose to know you. I choose to learn your ways. When we die, when we cast down the sin nature, the flesh nature, yes. the soul nature of man with all its needs and wants. That is the very, 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 very time that we're able to touch heaven. Yeah. See, because it, it, it also requires a, <coughs> excuse me, it also requires a hunger. Absolutely. You, you, you have to be hungry, for, which means that you have to have a strong desire. You have to, you have to, you have to want it more, as much as you bring. <coughs> Yeah, sometimes you just got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. And say, Lord God, I, I surrender. Yes. I surrender. And what does surrender mean? Lord God, if you don't never bless me again, I just want to know your ways. I want to be in your presence. Come on. Yes. I want to fulfill my God-given assignment on earth. I surrender my ways, my thoughts, everything onto you. Just total surrender, surrender your, your mind, yes. your will, and even your emotions, because your emotion realms keep you in a place of instability and being unbalanced. He gave them to us, but we are to govern those emotions right. and not and be governed by them. That's Come it. on. That's it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you and when you when you go after him and you hunger for him and you seek after him, you know, <coughs> he, Jesus, Jesus said this, he says, those that hunger and thirst 
after righteousness. They will be filled. She'll be filled. Mm -hmm. So right there, he gives us Mama. a guarantee that, that if you hunger and thirst after me, yes. come on, wait, like we said earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the, the kingdom. kingdom of God and yes. his righteousness. And all these things it will be added unto you. Will be added unto you. So, so when you, so when you put him first, and when you hunger after him, mm -hmm. then you will have an encounter with him. Yes. Now, now, sometimes your your encounter may not be like the prophet Isaiah's. Mm -hmm. Your encounter might be his voice. It, it, right. Your encounter might be his word. Your encounter might be uh, um, where you have a, a, a vision. Yes. Or you may dream, or uh, you know, God is not limited on on how He speaks. No, we limit God on how He speaks. Yes. So, so my I, my my wisdom to you is to be open for like God, I'm open for wherever how you want to speak to me. Yes. I just want to know, and I will seek you. Listen, you got to be like, got to be like um, Jacob. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop seeking you and calling your name and, put, and, and wrestle with you until you bless, bless me, me, until you speak, yes. until you give me clarity of vision yes. of what I'm called to do. Yes. I want a fresh encounter with you, God. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, stretch your hands towards us. Thank you, Lord. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. I thank you, Father God, that hunger is being stirred, Father God, yes, God. and your people, Father God, to thank seek you, after you, Father yes. God. Father God, I, I thank you, Father God, that those I, those Isaiahs that, that we have placed in our lives, Father God, I thank you, thank Father you, God, Lord. that you are giving us insight and revelation yes. on, on to help us to identify what those are yes. so that we so that they can be removed so that we can see you. So that you can be glorified through our life. And I just thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people, Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, Amen. we love you. We love you. We thank God for you. Um, we would love for you to come and join us here at Kingdom Empowerment Ministries. Our address is 2700 Pine Grove Avenue here in Port Huron, in Michigan. Uh, our Sunday service is also at 12 noon. Now, if you can't come and join us, continue to watch us on Facebook Live as well. Yes. Um, you can um, catch us on Facebook Live. You can go to our Facebook page, key, at Kingdom Empower, at Kingdom Empower. Yes. And you can also, if you want to find out more information about Kingdom Empowerment Ministries, mm -hmm. you can just go to our website, www.kingdomempower.com. Org. Amen. 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 Listen, we love you and we see you next time for your kingdom empowerment. Blessings.